Hi everybody, this is Shri Malik from Dotsway.com. Today I'll be talking about Docker. You will find out what is Docker, what is a container, and is it really better than using AWS EC2 snapshots or virtual box images? I will also show you how to create one, how to attach it, and how to delete it, and some other basic commands. All this gonna be in the next 10 minutes video. And by the way, this is going to be part of DevOps tutorials, so please subscribe, like to get some updates. Thanks. So what is Docker? Docker is one of the best containers platform providers in the market these days. In case you don't know what a container is, in a development or testing environment where a team wants to test or use different operating systems or different configuration, virtualization was the best answer at that time. Containers now provide a fast and lightweight solution. Imagine the need of testing your application in a different environment while using maybe different middleware technologies or configuration. With containers, you can start the required system fast and easy, and yet stop it when you don't need it. You can also automate the container creation with predefined configuration. Some people they ask me why to use container and not cloud image or virtual snapshot. Based on my experience, I did notice that container is much faster to start and stop. Also, there is no need to pay extra cost for keeping the snapshots or images, like for example for AWS EC2. Also, if you have hundreds of images, they will be hard to manage compared to containers. And whenever you make changes to the environment, you can track it with Docker, while you cannot do that with the snapshots. So with Docker, when you do any change, you can check the, the container, you can check the image, and you can know what happened or what you did exactly to it. In this example, I'm using CentOS 7, but if you are using Ubuntu or any other flavor, just use the equivalent commands, for example, for YUM. Other than that, it's going to be the same. So let's start by installing Docker. I'm using YUM install Docker. If you get an error like no package available, just try to check the repo. And for any of the commands has to do with the repo or that tutorial, just check the description. I've made another version, a written version, that you can get all the commands and all extra information from there. Now, after installing Docker, we need to start the service. In my case, I'm using system CTL. If you are using earlier version, you can use service start. And then I'm going to check the status of the service to be sure that it's running. Okay, now Docker is running. We can test also Docker by using basic commands like Docker version. And also you can check the Docker info, which is going to give you information about the total memory, the storage, the available storage that you have, and a lot more. Now let's start by adding a user to the Docker group. So you can, after that, stop using the root user and use that user for Docker. So in my case, I'm going to add the EC2 user to the Docker group. Usually when you install Docker, it's going to create the Docker group for you. If it's not there or you're getting any error, just create that Docker group. Now let's start with the basic commands for Docker. To list the images, you can do Docker images. 
but since this is a fresh install we don't have any images installed at the moment so let's start and search for example for any available images inside the docker index which it's available for everyone now we are getting a full list of all the available ubuntu images inside the docker index you can also filter the search results by adding any of the filters that way so one of the filters which i really like is searching only for the official images so i'm now gonna search for centos only the official ones Okay, now it returned back showing the official CentOS and we can choose which version that we want. So let's start now by downloading an image by using Docker Pull. And then I'm going to put CentOS and double dots and then I'm going to put the version I'm looking for. Now it's downloading the CentOS 6. And after it's done, we can use again Docker images. And now we're going to find that we've installed the CentOS 6. And here we have the image ID. And when was that image created? And the size of the image which was taken from our system at the moment. Now let us create our first container. To create a container, use Docker run and then use minus i and minus t for the terminal and then we're going to add the image that we just installed now it's ready and we did run it and now we are inside that image actually we are not using centos 7 anymore if you check for the release that we have here at that system it's going to be 6.9 if we exit and we go to the main system and we check again for the release, it's going to be 7. So now we did a great job. We did create a new image and a new container and we did logged into it. Now after creating the container, we need to start it. First, we can check all the available containers. And we're going to find that this is the one we created. So you can start it by saying docker start. And then it started. To connect to it, you can just simply put docker attach. And then you again, you're inside that container. Now you are using the CentOS 6.9 system. You can do any modifications or updates or whatever you want to that system and either ignore it or you can commit the changes to that image. So for example, I'm going to install the Apache right now. I'm gonna pause it and get back when it's done. Now the installation is done and the image now it's modified because now you have inside that container the Apache is installed. What if we wanna commit those changes to that image? We can exit and we can use something called Docker commit. And to use that Docker commit, we need to use the image ID again. And after the putting the ID, you can name it or you can tag it with whatever tags you want to call it. So for example, I'm going to call that image after the changes dots way. 
Now it was committed and it gave us a key back. Now if we check again for the images, we're gonna find our new image, which is called Dotsway. So that's the original one that we've installed and that's the other one that is there now after the modification. You can also remove an image, but first, before removing any image, you have to be sure that the image has no dependent child or being used by stopped container. So, if it's being used, that image, by any container, you cannot delete it before you remove it first. So now we have all the containers and we can use Docker RMI with whatever ID to delete whatever we want. Also you can use Docker stop to stop all the images at once and then delete them all over. Let's try this now. I'm going to stop all of them by using docker stop and dollar sign checking all the containers that we have and doing a query and then I'm stopping all of them. So now I've stopped all of them at once. Now I can remove all of them, not the images, but everything. After stopping all the ones that we did run, we can check again the images and they are there and now we can safely remove them. Now it's deleted. Now we have only the original ones. That's all for that today guys. We got all the basics for the docker and please share and like our page and subscribe to the youtube and in the next tutorial we're going to have some advanced features for it thank you so much